these range picks are open. And there's the Corky for Checo Lad. Polish Corky, quite famous in the scene, right? Polish Corkies normally do incredibly well, and Checo Lad is definitely one of them. Yeah. So looking for that, and the, the Jinx is already the response pick. But let's see what Mirage do, because... Zach doesn't work as well against a Corky as it does against a pick like a Victor, right? So maybe mm -hmm. that kind of pick isn't there, but maybe they have something else prepared. Yeah. Though typically rangeland has gone for these meta picks, we'll see. Ooh, yeah, like, Lux. Like, like you mentioned, yeah, it's uh, Valkyrie is a very good ability that you can use to escape for any yeah. sort of danger. And I find the lockdown potential you have, right, with this Lux is interesting. We haven't seen a ton oh. out of Enchanters, but uh, they pick up the Nautilus. I was saying Thresh is banned. They want some hard CC, but you seem a little bit adverse here, Veteran. I mean, Raxo really likes to have control of the map. Champions like Nautilus are already good for that. Yeah. But like you're saying, Enchanters are the big it right now because champions like Nautilus don't have the kind of burst they used to have yeah. if you were to face check them. So you could see an Enchanter response here by Camellius, and you could see them go into a team fight, but instead he matches it with Leona. He's going to try to play against Raxo at his own game. Um, so maybe if they move into the affiliate, no, the affiliates is already banned here, actually. It's mm -hmm. difficult to think of a champion they would do that could heavily punish the Jinx then with this Leona pickup. But they should be looking to do AD. It's going to be the Caitlyn. Oh, they switch at the last second. Caitlyn's an undervalued pick, in my opinion. Yeah. I think a lot of teams veered away from it because even though it was getting significant leads in early game, AD carries get caught out once or twice in mid-game, and when you lose tempo as Caitlyn, mm -hmm. that's very, very bad for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, so they've moved away from it. I kind of like Caitlyn still anyway, but maybe not with Lux. Lee Sin, safe pick. If you give Jungler a microphone, they'll be spamming Lee Sin in there until you pick it. So he's on a comfort champion. Rangjun, we've seen this already. The Yon has been picked up, and Laxo's on the champion with decent amounts of map control. So if he ever gets towards midsection, really yeah. easy to do a play there and someone to accelerate. Yeah, and speaking of which, Steve, considering they pick up the Yone as well now from this, I'm surprised Game War didn't opt in to actually take uh to actually take the adc pick so now more of the pool mm -hmm. be stifled i imagine caitlin bans and even the yep. gym ban too just to make sure that inax doesn't have Ooh. any sort of uh advantage but they take away melanix gp which we've seen before and they did quite well on but what i'm looking at right now is the ap flex for mirage because we've seen all ad Ooh. you know just uh drafts to them before so they need some sort of damage They're looking at gwen potentially diana was an option heck bring out the echo if you can <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a counter pick here for Bad Lulu. They're going to be able to go jungle on the next one. They banned Zack, even though they have Corky. Um, mm -hmm. I guess someone really doesn't want to play against Zack on their team. Mm -hmm. But these top bans set up a probable Camille counter pick. But I'd imagine there's no reason not to just go uh, for a jungle match here unless there's some kind of counter pick in the jungle that they're thinking of, something that could counter the entire composition on the enemy team. Nope, it is just going to be. Jungle pick straight up here. It's Sejuani. It's an old classic, right? I I love Sejuani. I, I wish Beatdown Boulevard <laughs> was here to see me. I've been talking about Sejuani for so long. Beatdown, if you're listening, look at that. I told you, people still play Sejuani, man. So it's a, I'm excited about it. I'm a big fan of this champion because it's just like... Uh, I, cause I was a big Cinderhulk player, so this right here brings back some fond memories. As, as the response into the ADC will be the Jin. We've seen in actions before, right? And that has been one of the most common responses between the three ADCs yeah. picked up within the LFL, and that okay. is the Camille pick that you were talking about. Jax. So, uh, let's Jax. see what uh, Mirage picks. Jax. Jax, come on, you have to have done this to set up a Jax pick for bad Lulu. Like, this, it, it telegraphs Camille so much that you're either giving them Camille with a super strong counter pick that bad Lulu's comfortable with in mine, or you want them to go tank so you go Camille. Irelia would be another one. If bad Lulu's strong on these kinds of carry champions and has got himself a favorable matchup, this could be something they look to play around so long as they unlock bot side. Do they that... unlock Raxo, shift mid, shift top? and play hard around bad Lulu, this could be a big game. Yeah, and we were talking a bit about this before as well here, Veteran. Yes. Right? We were talking about, you know, unlocking bad Lulu, seeing what more he can do in the game. I've personally been looking at, you know, just giving him resources, and especially on this Aurelia, they're going to want to do that. But one main they issue... They kept the Ignite Summoner top lane they did. Game Ward looking to map split heavily topside, try to shut this Irelia down early. 
at the very least, that gives them a lot of information, just the war that they have there. We're likely to see heavy fighting topside in the opening phases of the game. Lee Camille, I actually think they win that. I don't really see Sejuani Aurelia having a lot of options unless Irelia trades really heavily level 2 with her passive and makes that work. But I feel like with this Ignite top, as Lee, you definitely want to get there early. As Sej, you definitely want to get there early. There could be a bit of a bloodbath there. That could even decide the game. Camille gets the kill there with Ignite and snowballs really heavily on Bad Lulu mm -hmm. and sets up another bounce back to another Lee gank. This yeah. game could already be decided there. Yeah, as I believe it'll come back to us in just a couple of seconds. We should be resetting for Correct. just here and there, as I believe it was a Lee start as well for, for the Lee Sin too. So he's looking to go ahead and start this game. For super super start. Yeah. There as Super Duper fast, I should say, and there we go, even at least given over from Memento as well on the Sejuani. Uh, so both of these junglers want to make sure that they're getting to top side as fast as possible, like you were mentioning. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see Sejuani's clear speed now. She used to actually be an incredibly fast clear, where people were really underrating that yeah. aspect of her. Akabane, they're ultimately on two camps first, moving to top side, abandoning Krugs on bot side. If he looks to do Gromp here, then he's looking to do a really, really early gank. That's the fastest way to get level three, and so he is. So we could see him lean really early towards top side, maybe go through brushes. You can see Camille playing quite aggressively here. She's level one for Bad Lulu's level two. Too. This is a window for Bad Lulu. So Lane has been allowed to push in by the Camille. And given that, it could be an opportunity for Lee to make a play. Irelia, though, hasn't quite gotten the crash there, but she is aware of this threat, goes toward Camille, signals that Lee knows he can't enter River there. And so it looks like Lee's just going to commit Instead to the rest of his Instead, Botside, Cody's son is just dead. That's oh. it. First blood a bit too far in Lane, and the Ignite will take him down, burning both summoners. We we spent we spent too long talking about the long lane. It was all gonna pop off boss. It was predestined the whole time. <laughs> some, no summoners left. Tries to cleanse the ignite and tries to cleanse the CC. Um, but ultimately not enough. He is gone. Jin has a lot of burst in early phases of the game, and obviously Jinx, she needs to scale. And this is uh, one way to make sure that that does not happen for the Jinx too. So I'm yeah. fine with this. This is such a good start for Gamers Ward because they can just look to shut down one more of these lanes where Mirage knows yeah. that's their late game insurance. That's where they're looking to play more so around as they get to the mid game. So if Cody's son isn't even allowed to get out of lane, then Araxo, we were mentioning how he wants to link up more with Memento. He's been doing a phenomenal job of that. So map control might not be the easiest part of this game. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be much harder for him already. He wants to be contesting, but Sejuani is on top side and he has to be there on the bot wave because Jinx is now on the bad wave there. If he's not there and Leona turns out to be there, Jinx just gets killed on the next wave. Leona, we know that she's leaning top side here just in case Bad Lulu makes a mistake, but they don't know that. Right, so Nautilus has to move down here. He's not free to make a play on midsection. And it looks kind of tasty. Sheko lad on kind of low mana. Rangjun with a wave moving into him. Leona shows up there. Jinx and Nautilus start to push quite hard on bot. Maybe trying to see if they can reset um, before the next wave arrives. But Sejuani is coming down. She'll be able to escort them in. At least the threat of her being bot side might help them out here a bit. So you can see the waves moving quite slowly on bot. The, ma the wave top here is really good for Bad Lulu. Bad Lulu can just recall and come back in. Yep. Probably he'll teleport in because Camille can actually clear this quite fast. And there's Sejuani escorting the bot wave. If you don't do this, Leona and Jin can just open up another 2v2. Yeah, indeed. And we do not want that to happen again. Cody's yep. son dying twice before 10 minutes would be extremely detrimental for the game plan of Mirage, who seems to have a really clear vision of what they want to do, right? Alongside this, alongside this is yep. Hedwani, it's all AD composition with the Yoni, with the Aurelia. They have such good team fighting, like really aggressive laners, and they want to go in. They want to make sure that game, most of game war dies before they even know what happened to them. And uh, with us right now, it's not great, but a, a much tamer early game than the one we were expecting. Yeah, I mean, they did a good job of fixing the wave on bot side, but you can see Sejuani fell behind from doing that. Two camps behind on the lease in there because of the time she had to spend bot. It has allowed Raxo to get back on the map, but at a small cost to her. And she's not going to be able to do anything topside on that. Camille is actually rather safe. Rangjun 
goes for the trade with the little bit of safety he has, knowing where Leona is, having a at least fairly good idea that Lee Sin can't be there. Quite aggressive play from him. Mm-hmm. Jinx is still safe, but ultimately no windows opening up for Rack so early. At least they fixed the map, though. Like, that's the really yeah. good kind of thing that you get from this kind of jungle support. Yeah, and They're not just going to leave you on bad sites. Consider the wave we're actually pushing as well, too. We should see Inax yep. Camellius look at this process wave in. We could see Pedestal Dive coming down. Check a lot is oh. here, but Cody Sun or Axel sniff this out. And they know they don't need to be here right now. They'll have to give up a lot in lane and EXP. And Game World will take that in space as they get the Dragon off of this as well. Yeah, Cody doesn't want any of that. You can see Rangjin and Sejuani leaning there for a potential contest. Rangjin does need to go back for his wave, though. Mento looking for the steal. I mean, we know he's Kabin a tanky low. boy, and they'll just they'll give it away. Yeah, Akabane knows he's far too low. He lost a yeah. lot of health soloing that Cloud Drake. And yeah, that's just a solid pickup coming out from Mirage. Really well-timed. Yeah, both carries there, though, kind of giving up all. No way this turns into more. Yeah, okay, no way. Okay, yeah. Um, both carries there, giving up CS Unless... for that though. Oh, oh, oh. the Vanguard is angel, sadly under tower battle. Luke couldn't Ooh. follow up, but uh, if he had the fully stacked pass, which he does, Melanic would have been in trouble. Yep, he has the fully set passive, but he's just threatening just enough so he can get the crash off. I think he just really wants a recall here. The timer will already be halfway done by the time he's back in lane, maybe even all the way done by the time Camilla's in threat range. Jinx getting recall on bot. Nothing gonna really happen here for a little bit unless Rangjin finds another window onto the Corky. Shutting down that Corky early could be very, very good for his team. Um, but Corky has all of the escapes in the world to prevent that happening, so they're likely to just stare at each other for a bit. This swap is quite interesting, actually. So you're going to have Jinx catching wave on top side, while Sejuani and Raxo either look to make a play on Novix and Melanic or look for control. It's all about this Herald right now. Leona Jin pushed bot and are now heading in. Bad Lulu doesn't have a teleport to join this fight, and Camille's recalling and also doesn't have a teleport either. So it's going to be a 4v4 contest around top side, but with Mirage just being that little bit slower. They already have their AD here, yeah. but Jin's here as well. Both top laners are not going to be there. Raxo finds a pick. They catch Camellius, but uh, there's no real damage to follow up. But look at this veteran. The absolutely oh. massive game-changing ability that I know haunts players' dreams. The package is now in for Shackleod as he manages to make his way down mid lane. Lickety split and now has threat yeah. onto Rangjun. Who knows he can't go in right now. And uh, with that, that's more than enough threat for them to move off the river. Memento. Memento leaning towards mid a little there, but nothing going to happen. Priority has been found on top side. Bad Lulu doing another trade of his passive onto the Camille. Looks like Game Ward are just going to freely get this Herald. They had priority from top there. Memento cleared some camps. Leaned mid, but didn't turn into much there. Now he's between Corky. And Akabane, Corky has that package. They could turn on him. Yeah, immediately they just look to cut off Memento and Ranju. They can't be getting into the fight. Oh, on the back end, the ultimate will land on a Jekyllon. And now they got to get away. Cody Sun puts the rocket. Oh. Mitch misses by a hair. Unfortunate, but Camellius is uh, most definitely dead. A couple more autos. The shield not going to help him. Oh my god, he lives. <laughs> that was all right. Very messy sequence there. You had Memento pinning himself between Corky and between three people on the enemy team, but you also had Corky put himself between Rangjo and Memento. Rangjo and Memento turn on Corky. Corky groups with the rest of his team, but Raxo, in all that chaos, found an engage onto Akabane, mm -hmm. threw an ultimate out and was able, well, not an ultimate, sorry, threw a Q out and was able to cause a full disengage. And Memento, he gets the Herald amidst all of the chaos and they chase Camellius away. We will learn from the Shame though, that, uh, yeah, that Jinx rocket hit yeah, that <laughs> probably could have been a lot messier. Extremely messier. clutch, yeah. And like, we were talking about shutting down that Corky, would, uh, although wouldn't have done a ton besides just delay a little bit of his wave timer, but would really nice for Cody Sun to at least catch up a little bit after, after the early game that he's had, which hasn't been too bad across the board. For now, though, both neutral objectives in the early game, just taken by Mirage, by simply just showing up at the exact right time. And uh, with the it's, next second... It's interesting, though. Mm -hmm. 
from two stacked waves coming into the Mirage on that Herald swap, you had Cody's son catch up in CS that he missed from being denied on bot lane on the top stacked wave, while Irelia continued to maintain her lead from the bottom stacked wave. So even though they had no priority in either lanes when they got the swap, they actually got a lot of economy on a team that wants to get a lot of good economy. And it, they even end up getting Herald, though they theoretically shouldn't because they were kind of behind on both. That should be the trade-off. So I think Mirage are really happy with what happened for the last couple of minutes in the game. They've just been winning everything that they want to win, even though obviously they began with a 2v2 death on the bot lane. Yeah, yeah, Mirage right now have uh, somehow managed to just consistently make sure that they try to push the banners in this game. And I wanted to highlight something before that we were talking about, especially on the back of, you know, Memento and Raxo. Even the coaches were mentioning how they they were pushing Raxo a lot more to move on a lane more, you know, make sure he vibes for, much, for just much more map control. And with him linking up with the jungler, it has been phenomenal to see the things they've been able to accomplish as gamers award. Brings more people to the party. We'll force with Memento and Bad Lulu. They would not get the tower, but they will get the dragon. Oh, Rangjin thinks he's found the way window onto Shekho, lad. Oh, he missed oh. the fate seal. No, he was just inches off. Oh, that's so unfortunate. If he lands at ultimate, he most definitely kills his man. He most definitely kills Jack a lot. Ah, so close. Movement wins games. Movement wins games, my man. Movement wins games. And Mirage, they find the Drake on bot side. Fishing for Rangjin a bit hard here. But mm -hmm. ultimately, Jack lad is covered to get another plate. Probably one more wave and then a recall from him. Unless he wants to taste Rangjin's wrath on the teleport. <laughs> I don't think oh, anybody wants to taste Rangjin's Wrath, considering yeah. uh, just uh, like you were saying, we've seen so many highlight plays out of him. And this player, he, he plays so aggressive in lane, coming over from Dam yes. 1, flexing his oh. muscles. Oh! oh, that's the rocket! Oh, no! They stopped the back. Goodbye, it's, check a lot. <laughs> and hit him with the thumbs up as well. All is good. Now you can see the disaster coming from the recall on the ward there. And they get it. Didn't quite expect the Jinx rocket, but they get it. Raxo now taking control of top side. This is going to translate into plates on Rangjin, which is good because in one minute time, the plates are gone. No, he's just going to recall. He's just going to recall. We've got enough plates. So recalls coming out from Rangjin and from Raxo. This bot side somewhat uncontested, but we might see them just roll straight there. There's no need to be in river three minutes until the next uh, Drake comes up. Yeah. I mean, that's the main timer that we're looking at right now for both yeah. of these teams to play a little bit safe. Oh. That's the Vanguard's edge. And Bad Lulu, I've been talking they about said. this player for so long. Put it almost fine. It's a solo kill. But look who's here. Here's Akabane as he looks to go in. Cannot find the kick on Bad Lulu. Still has it up, but just can't get the right engage down. Yeah, but Memento there backing up Bad Lulu as Bad Lulu goes in for the play. Actually looked a lot closer than I thought it would be, mm -hmm. given Camille's HP at the start. But with Memento there, and more importantly, Memento there before Camilius can get there, it goes ultimately in their favor. And they shoo Camilius off while Irelia just goes back to full HP again on like three minions, because that's balanced. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it this is. This going to be very, very, very terrifying. Maybe there's a chart levels of terrifying, oh. but that remains to be seen. Oh, it's a, that would be oh, an absolute sight to see. He lands the perfect do it again. And Melanick yeah. knows he has to get out of dodge. He cannot go up against this 3v1 yeah. right now. Not strong enough. Unfortunate. Exactly. Even if you think you're strong enough to take on Irelia one on one day, you're not strong enough to take on Irelia with Sejuani and Nautilus. It's not happening. And now Irelia's got the recall. She spent her gold. And with that, I don't think Camille can realistically take on her for a bit for a large bit longer. Game rests so much on Checo Lad's shoulders. That's who Game Ward have been playing around the whole time, but he doesn't have the engage options that an Irelia does. But in all these team fights, he's the guy that can output the damage. He's the guy that can carry them. And ultimately, he's getting further and further ahead. 167 CS at 15 minutes. He's doing really well for himself. Mm -hmm. He's scaling. Hopefully, he can be the threat in group situation that Irelia is going to be in the 1v1 situations. Yeah. And we've seen already just how much pressure Bad Lulu just puts out by simply being part of a lane. So the longer this game goes, I'm sure Game Word do feel more confident. But I know Mirage does as Ooh. well with their carries as 
But the way they're set up, they decide to move away from the Rift Herald. But they still have kill threat here, because but Rangjun is backing and Jackalot is top side as no team decides to go for Rangjun's TPing back. Yeah, Rangjun TPs back, they're staring at each other, but ultimately it's Mirage that get control of the wave. Mirage that can enter River first. Mirage, who are now poking the Checo Lad bear. Checo Lad sat here looking for a flank situation with the package, right? And they, that's enough. They're too scared. They can't handle the poke of the Corky. They give it up again. They're first in, but they're out once more. Can Raxo pull off some of the magic? Doesn't look like they're even going to try. They're, in fact, just going to accept this, push up mid, maybe try to take mid, but ultimately, oh. they're transitioning this into setting up for a Drake, taking bot side jungle. And if they can get the Drake, maybe they'll feel like that's good enough. But you can see the threat this Corky is around objectives. In a standoff, they win the range, no matter what stage of the game we are in. And they need to play with that. I like the idea of threatening Herald top here. It makes Mirage have to send defenders back, or this is just going to go straight towards the inhibitor. And whichever defender they send back, Shekalad's going to be able to beat them mm -hmm. towards this Drake, which is good because Shekalad doesn't have teleport, so he needs to be able to move. And speaking of which, too, Bad Lulu gonna back away a little bit from the wave. That'll be the second yeah. charge that this Herald yeah. gets on this on this tower. Too. That's huge. Oh, Lands what HP? Stun, but can't yes. go in. The tower goes down. That's such a big play coming out from gamers. Yeah. We're sure they lose soul point, but the fact that they open up the base is so much more worth it. Bad Lulu just threatening Jack a lot, but. No, it's being locked inside of Vanguard's edge might ultimately, ultimately result in a one-for-one -one trade, which they do not want. Yes, you want to go for that soul in five minutes' time? Well, we have an exposed inhibitor on top side, guys, and that can break open the map entirely. So there's a lot of threat now out there for Game Wolf from taking out that tower, yeah. and ultimately... Checo lad, he gets a 900 gold from one of them, he gets more gold from the tier 3, and he is scaling very, very hard here. He's even arguably further ahead than Irelia is in terms of economy. Ooh, uh, there's Camille down. This is uh, what yeah, I was talking about before with the combination, there we go. Oh! Off the screen away from the gauge. no way he gets out alive, but uh, then I said this gift that over to Memento, ah, no way. that's soul unbound, <laughs> gonna... Put Rangjun so far back as he has to walk away and see his kill, to be fair, being taken. <laughs> yeah, Raxo around the corner there, making sure that if he does find his way over the wall, he's just going to find his way into a much more humiliating death and another thumbs up. Cody Sun's sole job here, just to be as expensive as possible for the enemy team to kill you. Mm -hmm. um, and he is. You have to burn so much if you want to kill him from that position. He's fine, maybe dropping one or two CS on these waves, so long as... He doesn't become a problem for his team and scales in later. But look at the damage Shekola did there. Half health already. That was that was gross. Uh, More than just three yeah. rockets too. Chunks that Cody said, and now there's such a threat of him just being up against her in front of Shekola. Oh, here we go. As they open up the curtains, we see the Q only lands from Akabane, but. They just wants to zone away Mirage. They want this mid tower, but they hold strong. Memento is tanky. Raxo is a big boy, and they will keep their tower alive. It's like a scarier uh, version of the game's origin composition we saw earlier with Jin and Zo. There's just a lot of control here in these long lane states. If Jin opens up, Zo can poke whenever. If Jin opens up here, Corky can do that to a much more terrifying extent. There's very little counterplay available on the side of Mirage there. They'll get advantages, and the more damage Corky does, the more they'll get every time that they open this combo up. And Corky has it right now to use already, already stacked with the Ludens, almost at the full Burmana as well, who is going to start hitting even more like a truck. With just all these yep. Qs and all that AP damage is going to be disgusting up against Mirage composition. Yet again, although all AD, but... For now, we'll see Memento go for... Alright, just go back to try to defend mid as all of them move there away to try to establish deep vision and no one there to defend it. Oh! But Bad Lulu gets caught, puts out the Vanguard's edge, but uh, he will not get out of this live. A lot of healing, but it's simply not enough against the four members of Gamers Ward.
Yep, Camellius catches bad Lulu on the bad rotation, and that translates to two tier ones. Jinx peppering top lane there, but Camille's just going to recall and match that, and Jinx knows that that is the risk right now, so she peels off, doesn't go for the tier two, goes for jungle in the top side. This game's going to come down to a lot if Memento and Raxo can set up and get picks before Sheko Lag can just be rotated around all of these lanes, because he seems fairly uncontested there. Bonus points if you take out Shekalad himself, but we can see the strengths of Game Ward's composition coming in. Game Ward, though, they know that they wanted to make sure that they get this game goes as long as possible. But to do so, they have to contest this next dragon within the next minute and 10 seconds. So we should be starting to see setup already down there, too. But considering the vision already there for Game Ward, I find they feel pretty confident. I'm looking at Mirage right now to, to see. God, they cleared that out, and how far they managed to push these waves, considering top has to be spotted by Bad Lulu, but he has a TP to make sure they go down as every single member of Gamer's Ward makes their way towards the dragon. Yeah, Brangjun getting a lot of priority on bot. He has an entrance from the south side to get into that Drake pit, but he's going to recall. He has the empowered teleport. Uh, the Unleashed Teleport, I should say. Mm -hmm. And he can take that whenever he wants, so too does Bad Lulu. So Bad Lulu feels very comfortable pressuring topside here. Maybe, maybe if he can draw away someone from Game Wards to that Tier 2 tower, then they can finally grab one of these objectives for themselves. It would be the soul for Mirage. It would be the Hextech soul with two Hextech Drakes. That's a lot of power, especially on this auto-attack heavy team. Yeah. That would be absolutely phenomenal. It's like every single one of yep. you just decides to build crit static shiv. As bad Lulu knows there's a potential threat there as well. But instead, yeah. with him deciding that, you know what, it's totally worth it. Like you mentioned, he wants oh! to create that pressure point. What a rocket by Jekyllon. And they move away from the dragon. Mirage, no, with the package up, they cannot fight around this. And uh, Jekyllon yeah. instead just puts a too much pressure as bad Lulu pushes in the top tower. But... He's now under the threat of dying. Jekyllad knows what's going on. He chases him down, but he's by himself. He doesn't have the package that burned doing so much damage as he pops his shield bow. The rocket not going to hit, but Jekyllad is dead. Solo down by Memento. He's a bit too tanky, and now all of Mirage converged on topside. That's the pick that they had to make. They got the pick onto the Corky, the biggest threat by far on the side of Game Ward. And now they got that in time to go and do Baron. We're 23 minutes in. This is quite an early Baron. They can they can probably delete this, to be honest. They're going to they're gonna throw everything at it. Camille's coming in with the teleport. As well, Camille, like you said. Right on the backside, Raxo goes in. A lot of lockdown as well, but look at Bad Lulu. Look at Memento. They're both still on the Baron. Rangjin as well. Does Has the ultimate. Oh, look at the fight. The target Melanek. Oh, but he misses oh. on him. Lands it slow. He hops over the wall, but they will take them away from the Baron. They do enough damage. A good play by Gamers Ward. Very aggressive player. Not always there on the execution. Ultimately, they get forced off the Baron. That's kind of a win for Game Ward, but you can see how dangerous it is if they're actually able to take the Corky out. They've done it once. Can they do it again? Can they do it consistently enough to get to Game Ward's Nexus? That's the question. I mean, although I found previously, you know, it was uh, it was quite nice that they managed to find him, but that was more so just Chekalad going in, being just a yeah. Chad player, right? And I can't imagine they find opportunities like these again. So it's going to have to be on Mirage mm -hmm. for finding a lot more of these flanks, for getting good position, just to make sure that check a lot is not a factor in these fights. If Game Ward had that core key up, then suddenly they look so extremely strong. With him gone, then Mirage can absolutely reign supreme. As you continue to yeah. wait, Bear likely the next target for both of these teams. Yeah, I think it was a good decision by Game Ward also to give up the tier 2 on top side in favor of denying the Hextech Soul. I think with Hextech Soul, Mirage suddenly look very, very, very scary. Mm -hmm. um, as is, their strengths are on side lanes, but Game Ward honestly are just grouping with this Corky, and that seems to be enough threat for now. Camille... Not sure if she can contest. Oh, they caught Cody. All right. Um, no. Question mark. Memento's there, <laughs> along with two big body blockers. But uh, 
Camellius yeah. will just uh, threaten them as they force them off the mid tier two. Gamers Ward slowly but surely keep on pushing their advantages as they keep pushing Mirage back, putting them in a position where they know they can't contest these towers. This is really well played by them. Yeah, so as they don't get too hasty there because Rangjun was moving in from top side that whole time. They get they get the tier two on mid though, and now it looks like they're trying to Okay, they're trying to sneak this Baron. They know that no wards were mm -hmm. placed there by game ward for ages. It I think they've just got this, no? That is yeah, yeah they I think they just have this. They have no idea. Yeah, and Axe isn't they <gasps> put on the W or he senses it, he sees it. Now they're all coming. There's a TP as well. The Baron package. is also only at half. I mean, like you say, a package, I believe, which should not be up as of right now, but uh, as it looks no. to go in, yeah, Chekolar is already there, but there's the Baron, oh but Raxa goes down, looks to try to get out, and Nakabane is just oh dead. My Look God. how much damage those rockets do, and that is enough encouragement for Melanic to try to get revenge of Bad Lulu for bullying him the entire game. But Mirage, get out with three. Uh, okay, they're fine. Not Cody's son. Oh, no, then Mirage only get out with two, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, no, no Nautilus to help you. Okay, well, that is very unfortunate, Cody's son, but no Nautilus to help you there, bad Lulu, if he has been Tommy 2 tapped by the Corky. Um, phenomenal amount of damage <laughs> coming out of this champion right now. You can really see in these group scenarios, Game Ward can just win those contests, but very, very nice play from Mirage. Similar to Vitality, they have to kind of do things away from Game Ward. They just try to do things without Game Ward's knowledge. Kind of good death here by Raxo to ensure that they get the Baron. It's everything afterwards. They get this reset. They shouldn't feel too hyphy about this. Cody Sunbad Lulu shouldn't feel the need to be moving up here. I think you just have to accept you have the Baron and go. Because when this Corky's in the fight, you lose a lot of ability to 5 on 5. Unless you delete him at the start, I think you just have to cut your losses and get out. Yeah, we uh, barely got out on time there. Yeah, which they just unfortunately have not been able to do, right? The Jackalot manages to just stay yeah. so far back and so safe that yes. just by his just by his immediate presence, like, like you've been saying, right? Mirage have been forced away from his tower, they're forced away from objectives, and put into a position where they had to make a desperate call for the Baron. And with them losing that, although they have it on two of their members, or Memento and Ranger, yeah. especially Ranger is quite nice, so he can try to split away, but I, I guess Corky, you 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 kinda can't. These waves clear so well and then Ranger or Memento are left thinking, okay, we have to engage or we have to die. Yep, and Game Wards getting another hex tech. This is a Ooh, ho, ho, an axe blocked the Jinx rocket. Wow. Um but that is soul denied further from Mirage. I'm having flashbacks to our last game where we saw soul denied for absolutely forever, by the way. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how this goes, though. Like, honestly, it all comes down to: Do you get Corky before Corky gets you? Can Irelia maybe find Camille overstepping on these sides? Melanick's done a good job of not letting him get those opportunities. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, this this game feels like it's on a knife edge to me. And oh, Akabane looking. I mean, he's, he's around the side, oh! but... Oh, he finds the kids back. Cody's side, but unfortunately in the wrong direction. Oh! They forced him away, now Raxo is dead. He forced oh. him. Puts the stopwatch, staying alive for a couple more seconds. But now Melanic finds the gauge. Go, Rangjun goes the middle of every single member of Gamers Ward. And now Memento is the next target. Bad Lulu wanted that chat play. Misses the ultimate, and now Mirage have to limp away. Mirage had to limp away, but it looked so close there. Cody Sun, if he's able to get some penetration items in, able to just get a little bit more damage, and they might have a reset there, to be honest. That looked so phenomenally close. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, it's hanging on the knife's edge. I think if Jinx gets excited even once here, it's very difficult to play the game as Jin. It's very difficult to play the game as basically anybody but Corky. Corky's the only champion that really has any actual agency there for them it's amazing actually how uh how defining he's been in all of these fights yeah camille setting up on bot there but there isn't a drake for them to contest so i assume off this push he'll try to group again mm -hmm. they're really trying to defend this turret memento on flank he gets sighted by akabane so he just moves over groups back with his team mm -hmm. If he could get Enax there, if Enax wasn't playing so far towards the top side of the map, then he might have been able to nab that mid tower for his team finally. But you can still see game ward's composition. If they don't misstep, 
is incredibly strong here. And we've been highlighting Jack a lot almost the entire game, just talking to the team, and, and we've seen just with all of the oh. games from week number one, we were seeing how Game War has been a little bit of a coin flip team, but Jack a lot has been the most consistent player on this team, able to put out just disgusting amounts of damage and having one highlight play after the other. As they put out yep. the current call, and uh, they, they will chuck down Memento about half of his health, but <laughs> we're able to find much more. <laughs> At least Mirage will keep we go. this herd alive for now. There we go. Warmog's in play there. Uh -huh. Your poke is utterly meaningless <laughs> to a Giga Chad like Memento. That right there, that right there, you can only get with lots of protein and a good gym regime. All right. Also, <laughs> yeah, so they won't get the tower. The guy who can absorb all the damage absorbs all the damage. And the game goes back to this slow state. But the longer the game goes in that state, the more itemization Corky gets, the closer he gets to just one-shotting your champions. And your champions need to start itemizing into penetration. You have two tabbies out, well, two plated steel caps. I'm sorry, there's a huge difference there. Um, out on the side of game ward, a free actually even. Um, and the more armor that they get, Hell, even at level 14, you're already thinking LDR starts being very, very efficient because of the natural armor scaling of champions, which is why very often you prefer not to be a full AD team. Um, they need to start thinking about these things. That would give Cody some an edge. He almost died. Yeah, that was uh, really close. There's too much poke. Oh, oh. oh. clutch glare force. Just to, just yep. to make sure he uh, doesn't lose all of his health immediately because that could have been immediate converges. As Bad Lulu oh, no. is most often his target stacked up oh! passive and he solos oh. in! Bad Lulu doing bad things to this Corky and now they have found an engage. We've been saying it for so long. You kill the Corky, the rest of the team shall follow. Now they find a 40 second window for Mirage to do whatever they want. Yep, and they want this mid tower. This has been the point of contention for about five minutes now so and they'll long. peel off of that into the Baron. Maybe if they chunk this with enough time, they could try to move in towards the Drake. The Camille's resetting and doesn't have teleport. If they have any knowledge on that at all, then they should know that they can go for this Drake very freely off the Baron. You have one reset coming out on Irelia, but bad Lulu, better Irelia. He gets the 1v1 against Shekolad on the Corky. Takes out the critical member. Game Ward's entire ability to contest completely and utterly collapses. So very good response play there by Bad Lulu from Checker Lad's engage. Checker Lad probably going to think twice about going up against this Iranian one-on-one yeah. -on -one scenario again. Oh, they do get the hex tech Drake though. Yeah, uncontested. Yeah, because you saw how Mirage actually just resets a little bit too late. They just yeah. actually push out the waves first yeah. and then go back. So not able to be there in time. All the TPs are up. The wards simply are not. And I find for a Mirage, they decide to give it up yet again. Like you were saying here, not with this. We're in the exact same situation as last game. As LDLC had to give up the next two dragons. As a check a lot. Oh. Has to use package to get out Almost. of there. And that is a big utility focus taken away for Gamer's Ward as Mirage walked out mid lane. Yep, yep. I mean, Checker Lab was put on half HP there. He will gradually get his HP back. Raxo fishing for him, knows the game is won if he's able to get that. Doesn't quite land it. Jin buying as much time as they can. They're just trying to wait out the Baron buff here. Checker Lab trying to make sure that he doesn't get caught again. Leans heavily bot side. Akabane mm -hmm. lets him know that no one's there, so he knows he's safe there. He knows there's no harm can come to him there. Indeed. So he leans there very heavily. They clear next wave. Maybe they'll risk going on to the cannon as well. Yes. Okay, and Baron, the timer keeps going down. Keeps going down. If they can just keep the defense going and then just set up normally, then Chekolek can just do his damage. Let's not try to 1v1 on Irelia again, Chekolek, especially not in melee range. That, <laughs> that we should avoid. That we should avoid. Yeah, not the most Here ideal situation. I think that was the second time trying to do it. The first time we got it a liar. Second time he was not so lucky. But for now, yeah. they finally got this mid tier two. Camellius looking for a possible skin played in to, to, to see if he can lock down Cody Sun Bad Lulu. As you get a solar flare, that's a fair bit of lockdown, but those chompers will make sure that Gamers Ward will uh, get, uh, will, you know, at least stay away from inside their own jungle. Rangjun finally manages to push down Bot Wave enough 
and Bad Lulu was doing his work Ooh. on top side as well. So all three lanes being pressured from Mirage. Yep. The they haven't been able to get an inhibitor down yet though. Irelia threatening the mid inhibitor there, bot inhibitor being threatened by four people. Rangjun very far back here, doesn't want to get poked out, just wants to be able to follow up on the potential engage by Memento. Ooh, lots of damage coming out there. Cody Sun does have the Bloodthirster, though, will be able to heal up. Nope, ultimately they'll just reset off of this, buy some new items, set up again. No inhibitors have gone down. No points of automatic pressure have been opened up by Mirage. Game Ward, they're still in this game. They're still in this game. Yeah. And like you were mentioning, with, with, with the inhibs not going down, I find they can now yet again to look to set up around just the next dragon a Baron, especially this next dragon, considering it is up in the next two minutes. But considering how close the spawn timers are for both of these objectives, Ooh. I'm to play for two, but Camellius might have overstayed his welcome. He's locked inside the red buff pit, and that's a big shutdown over to Melanic. He should be back in time before the next dragon, but that's just that unfortunate. Yeah, Memento dies for that Drake. Memento rage quits the game, apparently. Um, hopefully he will be back in time. There you go, we've got a pause there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, so the next Drake is going to be Soul for one of these two teams. Both are on Soul Point. Uh, Memento, like you were saying, should be back on the map in time for the contest. Mm -hmm. Kind of curious that they gave up that third Drake, to be honest. Like, it wasn't a choice between Baron and the Drake. You could definitely get Baron and shift on towards the Drake. It wasn't like you could just sit there for 50 seconds and wait for the Drake. That would have been a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. um, but instead of that, they did Baron. One resets, Rangjun goes top, and the rest of them push out and reset instead of anyone contesting when they knew that they had advantage. Kind yeah. of strange to me that we're in this position. We're talking about a soul contest for both teams. But ultimately, that's what we've got here. Um, all they ended up getting was tier twos, no inhibitors for the Baron, mm -hmm. so kind of limited utility for the Baron there. Yeah. Um, yeah, this 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 contest, to be clear, favors Game Wars composition still, mm -hmm. right? They're staring at each other. Corky is going to whittle you down over time, right? Maybe if they can make a pick on him a bit earlier, maybe Bad Lulu side lane pressure will allow. Raxo Memento to get in onto the back line, lock someone down, and maybe you can burst him. I think trading one for one for Corky is perfectly acceptable there, especially if Jinx was to get a reset, right? And that could win the fight entirely. Mm -hmm. um, these kinds of things are what they have to be thinking about, right? How do we open up windows on top of the Corky, or at least windows to zone the Corky, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't really have any in composition, you might just have to use your one on one strengths with the Aurelia to create them on sides. Exactly, and and uh, as we mentioned before, right? Just take out the quirky. You actually do win the game right now. And as to how Mirage set up, where these next next sixty seconds is going to be crucial. Because Game World as of right now are feeling good about themselves. I know last week as well they had they had a pretty solid week. You know they're they're going one for one, and for Mirage too, a two o week. Uh, sorry, a one one week by the end of it as well. So I think with both these middle of pack teams. We were mentioned right at the beginning. Playoffs are on the line, and every single game from here counts for everything else. And I know it would be a big win for Mirage. We're coming new into the league, this brand new roster, and managing to make it the top four, showing to everybody else that, and most definitely here to play. But Game Ward, an organization that we haven't seen be super successful, but we know has been scaling up one after the next with these with these phenomenal players like Chekolod, who have been showing up week after week as we just get word on trying to see on uh, when we get back into the game to just uh, be able to update y'all when we can before now. We're just waiting on to see what's going on with Memento. So, tank tight. Yep, cool. Well, I mean... He died at red buff, I guess. So he definitely made the decision to go to red buff um, on human ping. So I don't think he died because of whatever happened here. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if he was in range to flash over the wall there. Um, and if he did, I think saving flash for the for the Drake is perfectly acceptable anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the whole game hangs on the knife edge there. You have seen Irelia scale in, mm -hmm. but as long as Game World are comfortable just permanently playing around their corky, they're not really finding the time to do what they want mm -hmm. with this Irelia. Right. Yeah, exactly. They haven't really broken to freeze anything like this. Go on. Exactly, because I was gonna say, yeah, like you were saying, uh 
we, we were looking at uh, a lot more of Mirage's games to play towards Bad Lulu, right? We were wondering that, you know, whether or not that's going to happen, especially on this Relia Pig going going up against the Camilla, right? You want to make sure that your Relia is as strong as possible just across the board so you can assassinate picks like the Corky as well. And he has gotten a little bit of resources. He's been quite strong, but now in these 1v1s, if they're out of melee range, right, Relia just gets poked down. Even Cody's son as well who we haven't seen be a big part of this game. He's been on the sidelines mm. just trying to farm up as much as possible, and now he mm. can't even get into most of these fights because of how much damage Chekola does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Cody Sun's kind of pushing a rock in the hard place there because we've seen him go for the early Bloodthirster. Fully yeah. understandable when you're enjoying this much poke. If you mm. don't have Bloodthirster healing you up between waves, then what are you really going to do? You can't stay there and clear midsection over and over again like you want to be doing. And that's basically what he's been doing this game. That's fine, you know, as an AD carry. That's more than enough, you know? Like, he hasn't he hasn't come in here and been, like, a detriment to his team, even though, obviously, the early 2v2 death is kind of inexcusable. Um, he, he, he's been performing his function really well from mid-game onwards. Mm -hmm. um, Rangjin... We've seen some of those like greedy, very aggressive moments, and we've seen some of those be successful. We saw a little bit of a miss at one of the Baron plays, right? Mm -hmm. um, interesting to see how he'll play this next straight contest, right? You could very easily see a potential opportunity happening as they all funnel through into him. Yeah. Could he be the guy not the Irelia that capitalizes on a potential backline dive into Checo Lad, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, because we've seen just how well Memento and Rengen have tried to yep. set up a lot of these plays, right, with the Fate Sealed along with, along with the Sedge Ultimate as well. Although the Fate Sealed have uh, not been able to find their targets a couple of times, if they do, if they do, then suddenly things look absolutely phenomenal it goes and flips on its head and then we have a game on our hands where mirage have taken control of everything the sejuani pick which i've so longed for and uh, gets to shine but although no memento still doing really good on it right he's the uh uh, uh yeah. He's that big beefy boy, especially with the war marks, taking all that poke and walking it off like it's absolutely nothing. So I think uh, I, I am hoping for just for Ranger as well to be able to find Big Fate sealed into the Sentinel and suddenly Game Ward goes boom. Yeah, like I, I feel like we're going to get back in after this pause yeah. and the game's going to be decided in one team fight. If it's not, then it's gonna be a complete mess like the last game we cast, mm -hmm. like the Vitality <laughs> game, which could be really hilarious because there are so many flashbacks to that. The fact that we got to a Soul Point contest like this mm -hmm. at all in two games in a row is kind of scary for me there. Jinx there could potentially just end the game if you give her one opportunity, and Jinx is on the kind of easier to execute composition, mm -hmm. you know, that just wants to get one good team fight, and the other team just want to be patient and play their, not play side lanes this time, but they want to be patient and play their ranges right yeah um we're in a very similar situation and when the pressure gets the players in those situations that's when you start Thank with you this conveyor belt uh, and there we go we're back into the game range is back uh, in we're not too sure what happened but uh all right we're finally in thank you all for your patience as uh okay low back in everything is cool we're all just fine and dandy we are indeed back into the game. Memento, as you can see, has not left us and has not left his team alone just because he died at red once. We are <laughs> all here for the contest, right? And we see Mirage, they've decided we're going to push out bot and enter through river that way. Irelia kind of deciding how she's going to enter this. Her teleports there, Memento misses on towards Melanic, but they still have ultimates up. And that is ultimately a low cooldown ultimate depending on how long they stare at each other. Maybe even he'll be able to do something with that. Raxo still has ultimate to make a catch. So too does Rangjin. Bad Lulu now starting to move. It feels to me like he really wants to get a teleport flank there. Like maybe the plan was to push bot, get deep vision, and have Irelia TP there. And if so, that plan's not really going to work out anymore. We've opened up Jin. We're getting poke out from Checo Lab, but it's not finding anyone. Rangjun clearing final ward. Yeah, Rangjun and Melulu are on a ward. So, with them being spotted, Rangjun actually has really good way to go in. There oh. we go. The dragon's taken away. Game is ward. Find the soul, but the fight continues. Rangjun look on the backside. Oh, Kane's like a bunny. Look on the back end. Already, Camellius goes down. It's a fight on two different fronts. But Bad Lulu flashes over the wall. Oh. And Melanic goes over like a Chad, but he'll die like one as well. Puts on a stopwatch. And then one after the next. It's too much poke. Cody's 
Hassan will pick that one up. But look on the other end, the base for Mirage is falling apart. Base is falling apart, but more members of Mirage are alive. Only Raxo gave his life to three people there, while Cody's son was actually able to pick up two kills. Actually, pretty good team fight for Mirage, given that they weren't playing with a Sejuani ultimate there. Mento got to get his HP back thanks to his Warmogs, and I, there was a moment there where I thought they might actually have that game when Cody's son started getting his resets. They're big with this numbers advantage, they're able to transition straight into Baron again. Don't get the soul get the Baron, kind of the story of Mirage for the last 5-10 minutes. Um, let's see how it goes. With the Hextech, though, the Hextech soul with four Hextech yeah, breaks, I'm really uh, surprised this game will win. Disgusting amounts of damage, <gasps> but to get the locked out of the battle, Lulu, his passive is stacked up, but it just doesn't do enough healing. Now with him dying, he'll try to be the sacrificial lamb for nah. his team, but no! Oh, that GA popping means that Rangjun would also die, and now Memento just trying to hold them off. He'll manage to get away, but for how much longer? As he gets locked down as well, the Blast Cone will do nothing. He'll be another target. Game. Almost all the members of Mirage get taken down. Raxo gets collapsed upon too, and Cody's son will be the only person left with Baron. But look at this year, veteran. As they're already in the base, they have a wave coming in. It's just Cody's son alive. It's 40 second timers. Yep, Cody's alive, but the poke no, Camille not. is coming for him. It's done. It's Cody done, and the game is over. Yep, not one team fight, two team fights, or one elongated team fight, if you want to really stretch the definition, but game would have turned into the victors. Feel like the game might have been different if Mirage got that, uh, got that soul, but... Ultimately, this game is Game Wards, and the Corky did pop off. 